Hey, joining us on the CNBC Newsline is Katie Stockton, Fairlead Strategies founder and managing partner. Katie, great to have you with us. We've really paired Thank our you. losses on the S&P 500 in particular, and what we've seen today is a continuation of what we've seen before, and that is strength in technology. How, how strong does technology look, since it does look like the markets are dependent on, on tech to keep the rally going? Well, large cap technology and specifically the FANG stocks plus Microsoft have really been the consistent long-term and short-term source of upside leadership. So that has not changed. And it really, in my work, shows no signs of changing. We have no signs of upside exhaustion for these stocks. That's meaningful. The momentum is still behind them and the relative strength is still behind them. And that can certainly help the major indices forge higher, irrespective of whether or not they have strong breath or market uh, participation behind them. Do you see uh, significant gains in the S&P 500 from now to year end? Uh, you know, I see in the near term significant gains in store for the S&P 500 based on the fact that it's managed to break out from its consolidation phase from June, which was in the shape of a little triangle. Those triangles tend to be pretty high probability setups where they see immediate upside follow through. We got inklings of that recently and then subsequently short term momentum turned positive. So those are bullish takeaways, but they're really only near term in their implications. The next major Major resistance and it is also final resistance for the S&P 500 is at that February high and there's still a good deal of upside to that level but that is where I think we might see sentiment catch up with the market in a negative way what we're seeing here recently is really a skittishness or what I consider to be a healthy level of skepticism but I have a feeling if we get closer to those highs mm -hmm sentiment is at risk of becoming too bullish, and that tends to be a contrarian negative takeaway from a technical perspective. Okay, so just the bottom line that we could go up to February highs or close to them, but at that point sentiment can change and we could see a pullback in the markets? That's right. So I'm not looking for a significant pullback between here and there, mm -hmm. but I also wouldn't say that new highs seem like a guarantee, even with that leadership from the large cap technology stocks. Okay. And just quickly, Katie, as we uh, enter a big week uh, uh, for bank earnings next week, banks look broken. Um, you know, if you, if you just look at their stocks... Just a you know, yeah, you know, we featured view. bank stocks in our research this morning, mm -hmm. and they've certainly pulled back in absolute and relative terms. In my work, they're at a proving ground. They're all testing support levels. For some, it means the 50-day moving averages, and for others, it means previous lows. Mm -hmm. But as long as they get a bounce here in the near term, an oversold bounce in absolute and relative terms, that will preserve that support, which is so important. However, if they don't get going in the next week or two, then mm -hmm. I think the bank stocks have a real problem problem from a momentum perspective.